Hi, I'm Matt Jordan from Jordan Fabrics here in Grants Pass, Oregon. I've been getting some requests online to, uh, or people want to see how I build the ironing boards. It's, no, it's not complicated. I'm going to head over to Home Depot right now and start with a piece of plywood. Let's go. I'm going to get a piece of 4 by 8 plywood and I'll just check price when I get there and stability of the wood um, and then I'm going to cut, have them cut those into three pieces 30 inches by 48 inches and I've got a little electric staple gun and I have used a manual staple gun uh, before on this project but I got an, an electric one and it, it's a lot easier so We'll have the plywood. I'm going to use a surprise fancy fabric for the top and batting that you uh, just a 80 20 batting that you quilt with for the uh, to give it a little hand, a little you'll and you'll see what I mean when I do that. So, my son was kind enough to drive me here today, so off we go. So, we're going to turn in the lot here. This is a big company. Fire Mountain Gems, big company in Grants Pass. They run two shifts during the day and they, they have all kinds of beads and gems and things that they ship all over the world. Here's Home Depot. You don't want to get it too heavy, too thick. I like this half inch. I'm going to get this half inch today. Four by eight birch. It's stable. It's not all warped. It'll last a long time and I'm going to cut three boards out of this. So I'm going to take it over and have the, have the gentleman here cut it. I picked up the plywood I need and I have it sitting here. I have three different pieces. It's cut 30 inches by 48 inches. And it, this happens to be birch plywood. It doesn't matter what type of plywood it is, as long as it's relatively smooth on both sides. And I, I liked this particular piece of plywood because it was smooth on both sides. It was a half inch thick, which I like. And it's extremely light. It really is. It will be easy for me to move. This is one of the ironing boards that I'm going to be replacing. Uh, it's about two years old. It's a piece of canvas fabric that I got at a fabric store. But you can see it's, it's wearing out here. It's, it's wearing down to the batting that's, that's underneath it there. It's old. It's mm -hmm. ugly. And I'm going to replace it and I'm going to try something new this time. This is the cloth I'm going to use on the ironing board. A few months ago I got in these cottons from, that are designed by K-Facet and they are a heavier cloth. It's also 54 inches wide as opposed to about 44 inches wide. This one is a nice soft look of, of all these here. I think this is the best one for an ironing board but it'll really dress that ironing board up and uh, maybe make it more fun to go over there and do some ironing. So let's head back over to the shop and put this together. The first thing I'm going to do to make this ironing board is cut the batting. And it's necessary to have this batting because you need something between the wood and the fabric to give it some body. And as you pull the fabric tight, it keeps it nice and flat and tight on there. If you just had wood and fabric, after a while when you iron, you, you get many wrinkles and uh, things that wouldn't be good for ironing. So I've got my piece of batting. I'm going to use two layers. So I just rolled the roll out, two layers, and I want about six inches around each side and that's exactly what I've got here. This is the cloth that we picked out earlier and so I'm going to cut it to size also right now. Move that over there a little bit. So I want approximately six inches all the way around. This isn't quite six inches on both sides but it's close enough to staple. 
we have plenty of plenty of room there to staple so that's fine and what I'm going to do is just come over here and approximately six inches or so okay I'm going to take the piece of fabric and put it up on the table now I'm going to add our batting on top of that which will be a little bigger than the fabric that will not be a problem because we're going to trim we're going to trim the batting down I'm going to cut the batting about to the size of about to the edge here I should say I'm just kind of looking as I go I'm looking am I doing okay yeah I'm doing okay you can see I'm going to keep going here a little bit I'm putting the piece of wood on now and basically centering it on here to, to, so that I have about the same amount of cloth here as I have here, the same cloth on this side as I have on this side. And that's about right. This is going to be great. My next step is going to be right angle cutting. I'm going to cut from the edge here to the corner of the board. And here, I'm, I'm lining it up on the tip on both, both times that I do it. And this will make my folding and stapling much easier. And I'm going to do that on all four sides. I'm going to put some staples in the gun. I use, uh, this is an Aero stapler, electric staple gun. T50 is the size staples. And these are 3 8 of an inch. I'm going to begin stapling now. And I'm just going to pull the cloth up tight against the wood, tuck it under a little bit, place the staple gun on that fold right towards the edge, pop it down, and I've got my first staple in there. And I'm going to continue all the way along this edge will be the first thing I do. I've got my first set of staples in. It's tied down nice and tight. And now I'm going to add some reinforcing little staples here, which will help in the future as this gets used. Just, just keep it tight down on the board. I think I'll stick another one here. I've got this side done now. I'm, I'm pleased with the way it's coming out. I like this cloth. It's not as quite as heavy as a heavy canvas that I bought before, but it's much easier to work with and it'll be fine for what we're using it for. Um, now I've turned it and I'm going to pull tight. I'm going to pull tight just against that end because I want all the wrinkles and stuff out of the cloth and out of the batting. And now I'm just going to pull the fabric itself. Be sure it's nice and tight on here so that it'll staple up very nicely. Looking good. Both of my ends are done. I'm going to start the long sides now. Start over here on this side. And I start approximately in the middle. Turn it under. Pull it tight. Get the stapler. Staple that down. I'm going to keep going down the line here. I'm down to the first corner here, and I'm going to tuck the fabric underneath and tuck it underneath on top. First, I'm going to staple this down here. I'll tuck this and staple it, and I'll trim off any excess here at the end. I'm going to get a press down here. I'm going through quite a few layers here. So this is where the electric gun really helps. Good. I'm going to continue now on the second half, stapling just as I have done on this first half. After that, I will go over to this side, and I will pull the batting just a little bit, and the cloth, I'll hold the board 
and pull it quite tight just to be sure there's no wrinkles or anything left in there that shouldn't be there. And that will finish this part of the process of doing the board. Okay, I've got it all stapled down now. Flip it over and see what we have here. Beautiful ironing board. This ironing board looks great and it irons really smooth. Excellent. This is an excellent piece. Thanks for watching the video today. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll see you next time.